Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. I said we serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Awesome he has been and awesome he will be. Hallelujah. God, we just give you praise on this morning. We thank you, Sister Kanisha, for leading us. Amen. Not just into in song, but leading us in worship this morning. Amen. It makes it so much easier to preach and to minister when the word, when the, the psalmist um, called and anointed by God has gone forth. So we thank God for her on this morning, for these musicians. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Whether it be in person or whether God's presence is set up in your own house, it's good to be in the presence of the Lord on this morning. Amen. Amen. If we can just open with a word of prayer. Uh, we're going to, you all know we've been having some technical difficulties this morning, but you know what? God is still going to get the praise. The word is still going to go forth. People are still going to be healed and delivered and set free. That's our prayer. Amen. Amen. So Father God, we thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your abundance. Um, that we are living in your abundance. God, we thank you for your favor. We thank you that you are indeed all that, as the song says. God, we give you praise for being all of that, everything that we need in every circumstance, in every situation in our life. God, you are that thing. You are that which we need, God, to get us through every season of our life. And God, we just give you praise this morning for that. God, we thank you that right here in this moment, whether we be um, in this sacred space or we have created a sacred space in our home, God, right now we just pray that we just shut off all the distractions. I said right now, God, we just pray that we shut off all the distractions. God, I pray right now that we shut off all the distractions. And look, God, that may be external distractions, the, the television, the, the microwave going off, our children playing in the other room, and, or it may be distractions on the inside of us about what we have to deal with on tomorrow and what went wrong on yesterday and what's not even going right at this moment, God. But, you know, we can get lost in our distractions and miss our breakthrough. And so, Lord God, we set us out all the distractions right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, and we set our ears and our hearts and our mind to your throne. <laughs> God, it is a waste of your time and a waste of our time to come into this sacred moment and not be changed. To come into this sacred moment and not be convicted. To come into this sacred moment and not learn something, not grow, not be comforted, not be strengthened. So God, again, as it's been said, as Minister Drew prayed, please don't let this just be another Sunday morning come to meeting. But may we see these moments, God, as a day, as an opportunity to live better tomorrow than we did today. To see it as an opportunity to live better today than we did on yesterday. Why? Because of the transforming power of your word. So God, we just thank you and we bless you. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. It's your season. It's your season. Genesis 8.22, the scripture that has been with us these last few weeks and will be with us through the conclusion of this series. It's just a good reminder that while the earth remains seed time and harvest, coal and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, coal and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Our other scripture that will continue to guide us is Acts chapter 13 and verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. If you are joining us for the first time in several weeks, we are in the midst of a series called It's Your Season. It's your season. We have clarified time and time again that in the body of Christ, in the, 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 the fold of the faithful, we don't have to wait on our season. It is your season. 
It, it may not be the season that you want. It may not be a good season, but it's your season. And it's a season for God to show you who he is. When we are studying seasons, the thing is, even if you're in a season that is not the best, guess what? It's just a season. <laughs> Seasons change. They change. It was a song we used to sing in the church growing up. Time is filled with swift transition. And so the same can be true that even if you're in a season that you're like, man, this is, this is the best season of my life because those seasons come. Again, seasons still, they still change. And so in our, in our study of David, we've used David as the focal point of our study for two reasons. It's because in all the seasons that he went through in his life, that it could still be said of him, even in the midst of his failures, even in the midst of his fears, even in the midst of his difficulty, that it could still be said of him by the New Testament writers that this was a man after God's own heart. And Lord God, we want to live our way. We want to live our life in such a way that no matter what seasons we endure, that you can look at us and say, now that there, that's a woman after my own heart. That's a man after my own heart. Not because we've lived perfect lives, but we have lived lives surrendered unto you. And then we want to be like David and say, as he said at the the latter part in the gray years of his life, I once was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. That means even in the good times, in the hard times, I, I realize at the moment I thought that I was forsaken, but I realized that even in the hard times, God was always with me that he's never forsaken me. We've looked at three seasons of David's life so far. We looked at the, the Bethlehem season. We looked at the Gibeah season. The Bethlehem was the, the, the season of, of faithfulness and small things. Gibeah was that season of early promotion where your, your character really begins to get tested. Are you in it for the fame and the fortune? Are you just in it because you love Jesus? Will you be the same person when they're calling you name, calling your name that you were when nobody knew your name? And that's the season of character. Last week, we looked at the season of Adullam, and it is the season of difficulty. And, and, and in that season, we realized that there was so much to cover, and I didn't want to keep you here all day. We had to break it up into two parts. And so we're going to have to continue in that season of difficulty because there is much to be learned in difficult seasons. I said there is much to be learned in difficult seasons. If we want to look back over our life, even though we do not enjoy difficult seasons, we've learned more in difficult seasons than we've learned in easy seasons. We've learned more in difficult seasons than we've learned in seasons of triumph and joy and promotion. We learn a lot in difficult seasons. And so we learned last week in, in the difficult season that, that the palace is no more David is no more living under the comfort of, of Saul and, and being his, his, his heart player. He doesn't have the privilege even of his home anymore. He is on a run for his life. His master that he served, that he honored, is now out to get him. He's out to destroy him. He's out to kill him because he knows that he's next in line for the throne. And so David is literally on a run for his life. And that is a difficult season for him. But we learned that even in the difficult season, one, ministry continues. You would think that when, when David is doing everything he can just to stay alive, that he would get a break from, from serving, that he would get a break from, from ministering. He would be, get a break from dealing with, with difficult people. But in that season, God, in this difficult season, God surrounds him with the worst of the worst of, of, of Israel. <laughs> You would think in your difficult season, God would surround you with the best of the best. Somebody to encourage you. But it says that everybody who was broke, sad, in despair, and wounded came and followed David. So that even in his difficult season, he has to minister, he had to serve. That there's still wars to be fought and battles to be won in your difficult season. Not only that, we learn that God is still speaking in your difficult season. 
that just because it's a hard time doesn't mean heaven has gone silent. That if you listen hard enough, you can hear the voice of God. David had an opportunity, a call to go to battle, and, and those poor souls around him like, no, 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 we can't go to battle. We can't do it. We can't fight. We can't win. But David did something that we all must learn to do. He inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said, oh, no, you surely can overtake them. And so he went back to the people, and the people were still not convinced. And God, guess what David did? He went back to God, and God said, I told you, you surely can overtake them. And because he listened to the voice of God, get this, saints, and not the voice of the people, he was victorious. I said because he listened to the voice of God and not the voice of people, he was victorious. When you are in a difficult season, you're going to have to learn to tune your ears to the frequency of heaven. Because there are people, when you are in your difficult season, benefit from you being in your difficult season. And they don't mind you staying there because they're in their difficult season. And you know what they say, misery loves company. And so when you're complaining, they want to complain with you. When you're saying, woe is me there, woe is me with you. But you've got to tune your ear to the frequency of heaven because even when things are hard, God is still speaking. And one of the, the most poignant points for me on last week, and it has kept me when I've been in my difficult season, is that you will not die. Because <laughs> the enemy makes you think that you, this, is, this is it. I, I'm out for the count. But God says you will not die. This is not the season that you're going to die. He said, I'm not going to get the glory from you gone on the other. He said, you will not die in your difficult season. And it was even a time that it says that even though Saul was trying to kill David night and day, the Bible says he missed every time. And you know why? Because God said, you're not going to die. It doesn't matter who wants to kill you as long as God has purpose for your life. You will not die in this season. <laughs> you're not going to die. Sometimes you just got to say that because, you know, life can make you feel like this is I'm I this. No, nope, I'm going to live. Not only am I going to live, I'm going to live and declare the works of the Lord. Yes. I'm not just going to live and barely exist. I'm going to live life and live life to its fullest, knowing that God's going to get me through this season of my life. Yes. There's still more, more lessons to be learned in this difficult season. If you would turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 23. And even throughout the weeks in your, your private, just, just read 1 Samuel. We, we still, all of this is still in 1 Samuel. Eventually we'll get to 2 Samuel. But there's just so much in here that we couldn't possibly cover, but really surrounds and understand the journey and the seasons of David. 1 Samuel 23 and verse 16. It says, and Jonathan, Saul's son, rose and went to David at Horesh and strengthened his hand in God. And he strengthened his hand in God. Y'all, that's good news. That in your difficult season, God will raise you up an ally. In your difficult season, even in your difficult season, God will raise you up an ally. Now, now, an ally is different than a friend. Even though, again, they're synonyms, an ally is different than a friend. When God raises you up an ally, your battle becomes their battle. A friend is just like, oh, girl, I am so sorry. You, what you need, I can cook you dinner. I can, I can take the... No, an ally says, what you fighting against? I'm going to stand right here and I'm going to fight with you. An ally, your struggle becomes their struggle. Your sick child becomes their sick child. Your troubled marriage becomes their troubled marriage. Your unemployment becomes their unemployment. That they are in this to fight with you until you see the victory. Y'all, yeah. that's an ally. Yeah. Do you know how powerful that is? When God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, guess what? He meant it. He said, I will send somebody in this season to strengthen your hand. That even when you don't have the strength within yourself, I'll send somebody to fight alongside you to make it their fight as much as it is your fight. You, 
And that's what Jonathan was to David. He strengthened his hand. When his father was coming to kill David, he would tell David, you need to get going. My dad is on, on his way. Can you imagine how that made David feel to know that no matter what, that there was somebody standing on his side? That even in difficulty, there was somebody there to encourage him and strengthen him. But here's the thing. There's two lessons in this, in this point. Not only will God send someone to strengthen you in your difficult season, God will send you to strengthen someone in their difficult season. We can't always be the one on the receiving end. We got to realize that God can use us on the giving end, that there are people in our lives that God will send us to, to strengthen them when they are in their difficult season. One of my favorite stories in the Old Testament is the story of Moses when he was fighting in battle, and, and, and the scripture says that his hands were, were lifted up high. And as long as his hands were raised, guess what was happening? They were winning. The battle was victorious. But guess what happens when your hands get raised a long time. E even in the natural, if, you can, if I tell you to put your, that's why sometimes we start off worship like this, and then we go like this, and then we go like this. You know why? Because your hands get tired. So imagine hours on end with your hands stretched toward God because you're depending on him for the victory. The Bible says Moses' hands got tired, that they grew weary. And see, that's what happens so often in the body of Christ. There are those of us who our hands are lifted toward heaven, but our hands are getting tired. Our path, our journey grows weary. It doesn't mean that we're not believing God for the victory. It doesn't mean we're fighting, that we're not fighting from a place of victory. You just get weary. You get tired. And the Bible says, then along came Aaron. Somebody say, thank God for Aaron. Along came her, and, and they lifted up Moses' hands on both sides. And as long as his hands were lifted, the battle would be in their favor. That we've got to be not always the Moses. Sometimes we got to be Aaron. And sometimes we got to be her. Sometimes we got to be the ones that are willing to lift up our brothers and our sisters. That we don't have to be the one that's the center of attention. We are the one that's going to lift up the one that God is using in this hour. Amen. That's the first lesson. That's the, the lesson of this week. That God will send someone to strengthen you. Yeah. But then God would also send you to strengthen somebody else. Yeah. That's, that's the story of the New Testament. He said that we would strengthen and edify and build one another up. And you can't always wait till everything is right in your life to be a blessing to somebody else. And you know why? Because it's not going to be a season where everything's going to be right all the time. But it's even in our woundedness, even in our own struggle, that if we submit our souls to God, that he will allow us to be a blessing to somebody else. So if you are in this season, know this, that God is going to send an ally to strengthen your hand. I, I, I love how he said that the scripture reads there, not just be a friend. He said, I'm coming alongside. Your enemy is my enemy. Your struggle is my struggle. Your fight is my fight fight who can we be a blessing to in this in this season who is God calling us to serve in this season God sends you an ally the other thing that happens in this difficult season is this is when you got to get your your get control of your soul this is when you learn to rule your soul Here's what I mean, your soul meaning your emotions. It's in these difficult seasons, as I said last week, this is where we, we lose each other. This is the season, Minister Drew, where we see people one month and in two months' time, we don't see them anymore. 
It's the people that we saw for years. Serving, faithfully, giving, loving, laughing, and they're gone. It's because they were in a difficult season. And, and, and this is the thing when you're in difficult seasons. If you look at David, he went through so many emotions of anger and fear and frustration. And he even, he said, God, why have you forsaken me? He said, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Why have you given up on me? Why are you allowing this to happen to me? And 1 Samuel 23, 17, he says, Saul is going to eventually just kill me. That was speaking from his emotions. That was speaking from his feelings. That was speaking from his hurt. That was speaking from his frustration. But it's in that difficult season, in this difficult season, where you can't allow your emotions to run your life. I didn't say you're not going to have emotions. I didn't tell you don't cry. I didn't tell you don't hurt. I didn't tell you don't get frustrated. I didn't tell you don't get mad. I didn't tell you not to act like, I said don't you dare let your emotions run your life in this season. Because when your emotions run your life, that's what kills you in this season. Y'all hear what I'm saying? When everybody is coming against you, when nothing seems to be going your way, when you're tithing and you still get laid off, when you're serving and people still don't appreciate it, when you are raising your children to know and love God and they're still rebellious and running from God, it's in that season it's hard to realize that God is still on your side. And you know what? You may not feel like God is on your side. And that's why you've got to do like David learned to do. Sometimes you got to look at yourself and you have to say, so bless the Lord. Yes. That's what he said in Psalms. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. In other words, hey soul, in spite of what you're going through, in spite of what you're feeling, in spite of what you're dealing with, I dare you to bless the Lord. Yes. So bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless the Lord. And that's what this season of, of, of difficulty teaches you to do. You can't just bless the Lord when your prayers are answered. You can't just bless the Lord when the, when the manifestation has become clear. You have got to let go of, you've got to get control over your soul. Yeah. Proverbs says that a man that has no control over his soul is like a city with no walls. That means there's no protection. Yes. When you don't have a control over your soul and you have no walls in your city of your soul, that means anybody can come in and anything can leave out. Yes. That means anybody can speak whatever they want to to you and it becomes part of who you are. God said you got to get control over your emotions in this season. David had to get control over his soul. And you know what? He, he, he learned control over his soul. How do we know that? Because in, 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 in 1 Samuel 23, 17, he says, Saul just going to kill me. He said, I've, I've, I'm, he's the king. He knows I'm next. He has all the resources. He has all the power. He has all the authority. I'm not going to win this fight. But something happened to him in Ziglag. Something, something happened to David in Ziglag. And you would think that it must have been a good thing that helped him get control of his soul. No, I told you God does wonderful things in difficult seasons. I said God does wonderful things in difficult seasons. And so here he is in Ziglag, and, and, and we don't have time to go into all the detail, but here's the story of Ziglag. David had gone to battle with his men, and when he came back from a victorious battle, guess what? Everything was gone. All the cattle everything, his wife, his children, his men's wives, his men's children, everything was gone. And guess what the people wanted to do to David? What would you want to do to somebody in your, they were the fault of, of your wife and your children being gone. 
They was ready to kill him. So life wasn't getting better for David. It was getting worse. First Saul trying to kill him. Now his own people want him dead. And you would think that now David would go back into this whole thing. Well, I'm just going to die. I'm just going to give up. Woe is me. And, but he didn't. Something had changed. And the Bible said, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. See, David didn't have what it took. He didn't, ha- he, didn't, he didn't have what it would take to encourage himself when this journey first started. That's why the Lord sent Jonathan to strengthen his hand. But now that he's been in this season a while and he's seen its ups, he's seen its downs, he's seen the frustration, something that he's learning time and time, God is still good. God is still faithful. Then nothing that I do is going to change. And so it says, the Bible says, and David encouraged himself. If you look at another translation, it says, and David strengthened himself in the Lord. It's in this difficult season that you will learn to strengthen yourself. Because there will be times that it'll just be you and the Lord. That there'll be times that even the people that God sent to be with you, to guide you, to be your ally, won't be visibly present. And you will have to learn to strengthen yourself in the Lord. But that's when you learn to do it in the difficult season. You don't have to strengthen yourself in the good seasons. You strengthen yourself in the difficult seasons. How do you strengthen yourself? Not focused on your emotions, focused on the truth of God's word. God said that I am the head and I am not the tail. God said that all things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord and for those who are the called according to his purpose. I am working. I am believing God. So all things are still working for my good. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am above. I am not beneath. You know you have strengthened yourself in the Lord when everything has fallen apart. Nothing is as it can see it should be. And you can still lift your hands and say, to God be the glory for the good things that he has done. God is still great. He's an awesome God. He's a faithful God. He's a just God. He's a wonderful God. He's a promise keeping God. When you can say that with no money in your pocket and sickness in your body and trouble on your left and trouble on your right and you can still say that my good days outweigh my bad days, that's when you learn to strengthen your own soul. You've got to learn to strengthen your own soul. Because they were, the ones around him were ready to quit. They were ready to give up. They were ready to throw in the towel. But David said, no, we, we, we got this. We, I've got to, I've got to learn to strengthen. God, I'm not going to die in my, my sadness and my emotions. I know what it looks like. Somebody said, I'm, I'm not in denial. I know what it looks like. I I see it too. It's just that I know my God is greater. I know my God is greater than my disappointment. I know God is greater than my addiction. I know that God is greater than my struggle. I know that God is greater than rebellious children. I know that God is greater than my sickness. And that's how I strengthen myself. And the truth of who God is And that in the reality of what I'm dealing with. That's the difficult season. God gives you an ally, but then even in that, you've got to learn to strengthen yourself. Soul, somebody say right now, soul, bless the Lord. Hey, soul, I'm talking to you, soul. I'm talking to you, emotions. I'm talking to you, frustration. I'm talking to myself. You got to talk to your own soul. So bless the Lord because he's a worthy to be praised in the midst of unanswered prayer. He's still worthy to be praised. Soul, I'm going to bless the Lord. The last thing that we learn in this season is that this season is not to undo you. That's what we feel. 
This season isn't to undo you. Can I share something with you? God is never setting you up to undo you. He, he, that's, that's never. And I know that, I know that seems so simple. But I had to, I had to learn that. That, that God's intention is never to undo you. Yeah. I remember, before I get to this last point, and I'm saying this to somebody needs to hear this, I remember there was a season in my life and I had a, I had a, I had a health challenge. It was, it, was, it was years ago. And I remembered I, w- I was trying to encourage myself like David did. Because I knew the word of God. And I remember saying, I said, God, I know that you mean me well in this season of my life. That was my confession. I said, e- even with pain in my body, I said, God, I know that you mean me well in, in this season of my life. And that sounds good. That sounds, and you know what, what, what the Holy Spirit said to me? Now, God doesn't always audibly speak to me. He speaks through his word. He speaks through song. He speaks through people. But this is one of those times God audibly spoke to me. And you know what he said? He said, in what season of your life did I not mean you good? You just said, I believe that in this season that you mean me well. He said, was there a season? Was there ever a season in your life that I didn't mean you well? He said, no, in every season, in every season, in every season, he said, I mean you good. In difficult seasons, I mean you well. And so understand this. God is not trying to undo you in any season. He may be trying to undo some stuff in you because all of us can get some stuff undone in us. But God ain't trying to undo you. He's trying to get some, some of that stuff out of us, that worldly stuff, that doubting stuff, that low self he's trying to undo some of the lies that we bought over the years, but he's not trying to undo you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. (laughs) So no, that's why you can keep saying, but I ain't gonna die. die. I'm not gonna die. (laughs) The last thing is this, this season is a setup. It's a setup. It's a setup for your success in Zion. Hear what I'm saying. Not only in a doulum in this season of difficulty, not only are you still required to do ministry, not only are you required to still hear the voice of the God, not only is God still speaking, not only are you, can you be assured that you're not going to die and that God will raise you up allies and God will teach you to minister to yourself. The whole thing God wants you to see in this season of difficulty, it's a setup for your success. It's a setup for your success. See, here's the thing. Can I share something that I hope is not a, a, a is anticlimactic for this for this season? That even when we get to Zion, there are bad days in Zion. And let, let me just share something with you. That even when you get to your promised land. Even when you get to your promised place, even when you are walking in the land of your calling, in the land of your destiny, there are still hard days. I said, even when you get to that place, there are still disappointments. There are still difficulties. And God said, if if you don't learn how to deal with the difficulties here, they will undo you when you get to your place of destiny. He said, see, here all of this is training ground so that when you get to the place that I'm calling you to, you can be successful and you can grow and you can prosper. So everything I'm allowing in this season is to set you up for victory in the long haul. So many people you will see and then you you won't because, see, when you skip the difficult season, hear me now. When you, when, you, when you skip your difficult season because you knew the right people or you had the right amount of money and you thought you were doing yourself a favor by skipping your difficult season, when you get to Zion, you don't have the skill set 
that's needed to be successful in what God has called you to. So here's the thing. I know even when I said I was going to do difficult season for, for two Sundays, you said, no, we need to get over the difficult season. We need some good news, Pastor T. We, we, we need good news. We need shouting news. We need victory news. Not two weeks of difficult season. But understand this, my dear sister. Understand this, my brother. This is the season. This is the season that sets you up for victory. This is the season that sets you up for breakthrough. When you can have your whole world fall apart and you can still say, for God I live and for God I'll die, you are set up for everything. When you can live through a difficult season and see people fall away and people who you once served and loved come after you trying to kill you and you can still love them and protect them and still serve faithfully. God said that when you get to Zion, you won't worry about the people. The only person you'll be trying to please is me. So everything that God has allowed. He said, I'm setting you up. I'm setting you up. For victory. Those tears you cry is a setup for your victory. Your best friend that walked away is a setup for your victory. The job you lost is a setup for your victory. The job you didn't get is a setup for your victory. The people who don't like you anymore for you don't even know why is a setup for your victory. Your enemies that have come to destroy you is a setup for your victory. Remember, God is not trying to undo you in every season of your life. He means you well. Yes. Hallelujah. It's your season. It's your season. Lord, when is my season going to come? Right now, it's your season. It's your season. And it's a season that that God's going to help you understand that that no matter what, even if it's not not a good season, that good will come out of this season. And so even as we we continue, and and, and just so you don't get too excited, Zion is not next week. We still ain't at Zion, y'all. We got one more week. We're going to get to Zion. We're we going to be like the children of Israel. It ain't going to take us 40 years to get there. We're going to get to the promised land. It's just not going to be next week. We're going to get to Zion. But it's something about this difficult season. I believe the Lord had us stay here at the time that we did because this is when we lose each other. It's, it's hard. Do you know it doesn't make you less of a Christian when you're in a hard season? And you can say, I'm in a hard season. I wish we could, now I'm not going to wish. I pray that we get to a point in the body of faith when when we can ask another believer, how are you doing? Instead of just saying blessed and highly favored or fine, that we can say, I'm in a difficult season. Because you know what happens when we tell the truth? The ally that's been waiting to come alongside and strengthen you. uh, I'm going to say that again. The ally that God has set aside to come along and strengthen you is waiting for you to say, I'm I'm in a difficult season. I'm, I'm just in a... I, I love God. I trust God. I didn't say I, I was want fall. I'm just in a difficult season. And that we would be mature enough to say, well, girl, you just got to trust God. Did I say I stopped trusting God? I said I was in a, in a difficult season. And I just need you to come alongside and strengthen me in prayer. Can we pray, saints of God? Not only for those of us who may find ourselves in a difficult season, but for those of us who God is calling to stand alongside. God really does tell us to strengthen one another. That's what it means when it says together we are triumphant. That's what that really means, that we ought to strengthen one another. 
it's so freeing. When, when, when Sister Kanisha was singing that song, Freedom, we have chains holding us of people's expectations of what we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to praise, how our families are supposed to be. And it's a chain. And we're not free. But you can be free. By saying, it's a, it's a difficult time. But I know God is able. That, that we can see someone in a difficult season and not question their faith. Not question their, their walk. Well, if you just, they just got to trust God. That we could see someone crying. And not just wipe their tears. But cry with them. Cry out with them. Because you're an ally. If, if, you, if you need someone to fast and pray with, for you, for your children, call me. Because if I told the truth, I know what it's like to be where you are. Can we pray for one another this morning? Whether you're in this place or in your home. Just even before I start to pray, just begin to pray for your brothers and your sisters. And then pray for yourself. That if you're in a difficult season, pray that you would be open to receive the ally. <laughs> because we gotten so used to saying, no, I'm good. Or that you would Say, God, give me strength to minister to myself. Or maybe you're someone who said, I've been in a difficult season. God, help me help somebody else get through this. But either way, we all have a role to play because it's together that we are, in fact, triumphant. So, Father God, we just come to you even now. Lord God, wherever we are, all over this city, maybe even beyond this DMV area, because, God, we never know who we reach through these internet lines and waves but God somebody needs to be encouraged today that just because it's a difficult season does not mean that God has forgotten them that just because it's a difficult season doesn't mean that what God said will not come to pass that we need to be encouraged today if God said it will be guess what it will be it may not be in the timing and the season that we had envisioned, but if God said it will come to pass, God, help us rest assured that it will come to pass. So God, even now, God, we pray strength for those of us who are weary, Lord God. We pray joy for those of us who feel like joy is far from them. God, we pray for deliverance for those who are stuck in patterns of addiction and self-hatred. That, that even in this season, God, that they will see you, that they will hear you, that they will allow themselves to open their hearts to an ally, that they would learn to encourage themselves and realize that in this season you are not trying to undo them, but you are setting them up for success and not the worldly kind of success but spiritual victory spiritual success that means no matter what comes across our path we're going to be able to find ourselves saying soul you will bless the Lord soul I know, you will bless the Lord and God, your praise shall continually be in my mouth. So God, we thank you. And we bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're here, if you're here in the chat, 
and you are looking for a church home, or you've just never accepted Christ as your Savior, there's going to be a link for you to click on that you don't have to live tomorrow like you live today. And there's a group of people that once we know you've made that decision that we're going to hold up your arms and pray for you in this journey, in this victory. So don't let this day, don't say, I'm going to wait till we come back in person. I'm going to wait till I can do it live. But God's got victory for you before we go back live. So we just invite you, whether it's accepting Christ, whether it's joining us in membership, whatever it is, that we, we open these doors, we open this branch of Zion to you today. Amen. Amen.